these women always rise to the occasion. It's a great mix of veterans and new faces, but I can tell you, the United States always brings it at a World Cup. Jenny, thanks so much for hanging out with me today. Ah, oh, thank you so much for having me. How fun. I'm so excited to talk to you about the Women's World Cup, which is quickly approaching, kicking off July 20th. This is your third time covering the Women's World Cup. How do you think this one will stand out compared to past years? It's so wild that you say a third Women's World Cup because 2015 was really one of my first big opportunities as a sports reporter. And a lot has changed since I started this journey with those women in 2015. Obviously, they won the World Cup then. They then repeated in 2019. And I'm a mom. Many of the players have had kids along the way. So I feel really fortunate that I've been able to get to know them over the years. And what I have learned, these women always rise to the occasion. It's a great mix of veterans and new faces, but I can tell you the United States always brings it at a World Cup. Yeah, I love that that link you have with them. Going for the three P, this is your third year. Um, they'd be making history in being the first men's or women's team to win three straight World Cups. The road is not easy, as we know. What are the biggest obstacles this team is facing this year compared to the past two World Cups? Well, I think the reality of any World Cup, there's plenty of unknowns in going into a tournament. And the biggest thing, all the competition around the United States has grown over the years. And that's an incredible for the women's game. It speaks to how far we've come and continue to go. This is the World Cup, the biggest women's World Cup with 32 teams. So we're, we're already seeing it expanding on that global stage, but you're always dealing with injuries. And that's the reality for every single team. That's the same for England. That's the same for France. You're always going to have that. The United States did lose a, a strong forward striker in Mallory Swanson. She's out with a knee injury. And of course, that is a big loss for the U.S., but they always find a way to score those goals. And they have so much talent that's waiting and ready for their moment. And I love at a World Cup, you always kind of have this new star that's born. Who is it going to be? And that's the biggest question. Yeah, there's like a lot of natural pressure added when you're on the brink of history, right? So who do you think will feel that pressure more? The veteran players who have been in this position before going for that second or third cup or the team rookies, rising stars, like you said, looking to win their first and continue that legacy? It's a great question because I do think the veterans that have come before have always kind of set that precedent. And I, I know the younger players feel that and understand that, one, it's a huge opportunity to represent the U.S., but it's also a huge honor, and it is what they're known for. It's winning, and there's a swagger that comes with these women, and granted, I loved being around the men in Qatar at the World Cup, and getting out of the group was a great accomplishment for the U.S. men, but for the women, you got to go all the way. I mean, that's the, the highest standard, and I have no doubt they'll do it, and I think the younger players are ready. Now, the last two World Cup teams were under the leadership of Jill Ellis. Blacko Andonofsky has been at the helm for the past few years, but this will be his first time coaching the team in the World Cup. What can you tell us about Coach Andonofsky? What I love about Vlako Andonofsky is his commitment to understanding where every single player is at individually. He is always traveling around, making sure he's watching all these women, whether they be playing overseas or playing in the States in the NWSL. He's constantly on the go. So he knows what every single player is dealing with injury-wise. He knows their fitness. He knows everything about them. And he has a great relationship with them. I wanted to talk to you about the news that FIFA is guaranteeing pay directly to the players for the first time ever. Each group stage player making 30000 as a baseline and increased earnings the further they advance with each player from the winning team earning $270,000. How important do you think this step is in the larger conversation surrounding equal pay for female athletes? This is a huge step, and frankly, it probably should have already happened, but it is a step in the right direction. What is so incredible about being around the women, the U.S. women, it's their fight for equality has been part of the journey for years, and they've been pioneers not only in the United States, but for women all around the world. So yes, FIFA is stepping up in the right way, and it should continue to go that way because the women deserve everything that the men deserve. and. That should not be something I guess we're still having a discussion about in 2023. Yeah, couldn't agree more. All right, gonna pivot here, have a little fun. I love a good prop bet in sports. So I'm gonna give you some potential situations that could play out. And I'm hoping you can give me a yes, no, over, under, tell me why. 
This is just for fun. We are not giving betting advice on Xfinity Hangouts. (laughs) So uh, here we go. Over under three red cards given out in the entire tournament. Definitely happening. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yes. Will there be a hat trick a la Carly Lloyd in 2015? I would say no. Like what Carly did was incredible in 2015. I want to say yes, because I think that's a great story, but what Carly did is so hard to do and it might not be topped. Um, Will there be a six plus goal game for a single team? Any complete shootouts this year? I think yes. And I think it will be the United States. I like to hear that. I was leading a little bit with that question. (laughs) Last one. We all remember that gripping shootout ending the men's world cup last year, which you covered how amazing for the women over under two games decided by PKs in the knockout rounds. I think over, I do think, yes, we're going to have some PK decisions. Look, it's the love hate in the game of soccer. We love it as a fan watching. We also hate it as a fan watching it's emotional it's it's hard to decide a game in that way, but it also is so important at the same time to have a moment like that a world at a World Cup. I mean, all I have to say about that men's final in Qatar, it was it, it's going to be hard to top. Maybe it will be topped at the Women's World Cup, but let me just tell you, that game was emotional. And I'm a, I'm as a reporter, the ups and downs, sitting next to the French reporters, sitting next to the Argentine reporters. I mean, it was it was chaotic. Yeah. How do you like level set in that situation before going on camera? I imagine it's just nearly impossible to do, but you, you got a job to do. There's something about the rush of TV that I really <laughs> like. For the World Cup, I have a little space on the pitch and I'm next to all these reporters and we're all getting our reports in. It's very chaotic. I I know I'm lucky with the role. Like I have the best seat in the house, no doubt. Yeah, you're leading me into my next question a little bit. You covered the Women's Cup three times and the men's. These are long tournaments, a lot of travel, grueling hours. What have you learned about your professional approach as you've gotten a few of these under your belt? Covering a World Cup is truly like nothing else because it is a grind. And perhaps I've never covered an Olympics. I feel like it would be very similar, but you're just in this bubble for really 30 days, over a month of just covering and working. I mean, every single day you need to produce stories, you need to have relationships with players. And it is about that trust. And that's why I do selfishly love the women because I've already established a lot of those relationships and it's easy to jump back into the rhythm. But I will say when the World Cup begins, their guard goes up a little more and you just have to make sure that they're still able to have those conversations with you, trust you. And I guess you got to hydrate, you got to eat. You got to sleep when you can. And at the end of the day, it's it's really an adrenaline rush. Yeah. So everyone has a game day routine, players and press. Uh, what's yours game day? I love a peanut butter sandwich. I'm a big fan of just fruit bars just to get you through. So I don't say I'm eating the most balanced diet. It's like you eat when you can and you're, you know, you 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 do the best you can. I need more protein in my life, but I am kind of strict with coffee and a peanut butter, sa- peanut butter sandwich one available. That's great. <laughs> uh, finally, maybe the most important question I'll ask you all day. The World Cup is being hosted in Australia and New Zealand. How have you mentally and emotionally prepared for the notoriously massive Australian spiders? Have you thought about this? <laughs> oh my gosh, I didn't even know about that. I oh, don't know. how I bad have told you? Okay. Bad? Don't Google image it. Don't Google image it. Really? I'm sorry, Jenny. I don't mean to end on this sour note, but Ooh, maybe I did not know that. I'm I'm out. I I had no idea. Take a look, but don't freak yourself out. You're gonna have a great time. Um, I appreciate the time. We'll be sure to be watching you on Fox and FS1 as the World Cup kicks off. Safe travels down under. Thank you so much for joining me, Jenny. Oh, thank you for having me. This was really fun. And go team USA. And the whole world is wondering, what's it going to take to stop this U.S. team? Easy, luck. We mark Alex. What about Rose? Or Trinity? Poor bloody Rapino. Rapino scores! We could get younger players. They already did that. Goal! We have veteran experience. Listen to what you're saying. That is a world-class combination. Their flights could get canceled. Seriously? We can steal their place. (laughs) 
It's quite simple, really. You train for four years in an AR simulation that mimics their every move. Yeah. Initializing crystal done. I got it. We go back in time and stop them from ever playing soccer. It's a great game. You'll love it. Wait. Are you just describing the plot of Terminator? What's it gonna take to stop this U.S. team? You play faster. Slower. Rougher. Nicer, eh? Play with passion. With style. With precision. Je ne sais quoi. I mean, the entire world is gonna do whatever it takes to stop the U.S. Good luck with that.